because I mean that brings me to the topic for a person like you who is in the service business and you sort of like you know provide that service directly to people so what do you do for self-care how do you unwind because I can imagine that your work would be taking a whole lot of your time I'm a lover of music so most times I always listen to good music watch a movie and um probably go to the spa <laughs> ah, okay. I've, only I've only done that once so but i think i enjoyed it so i think i'm going to start doing it you should it's it's a good one it's um, i got a good, good start <laughs> the way you said it one was things that you go to the spa a lot oh i'll go to the spa no, then you've just been there I, once i don't do self-care i don't know i'm just i just think when i sleep my body takes care of itself it's it's it's, it's, it's um weird but that's there's a, that's that's 24 hours is not enough for me in the world again so I don't even have time for anything. Okay, maybe we would. Someone told me that this week as well. Maybe we'll start. We'll write a petition for God to increase twenty four hours to like thirty hours. Yes, yeah, so maybe they, you they. might just listen to us. <laughs> as you know, as you know, in Jelesta, <laughs> you talk to God for us. <laughs> All right, um, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just. This is going to be very fast though, but very very precise. But let me quickly read you know chapter's um profile he has a very powerful profile by the way but uh, i'm just powerful. Gonna... <laughs> ah, <we're> powerful guys <laughs> So look, Koji, professionally known as Chef T, stands as the visionary force behind Grills Inc, a culinary venture dedicated to revolutionizing the experience of suya, a traditional West African grilled meat fish. Um, this rather, somebody was asking me to break down this suya thing the other day, a white friend of mine. Like, what anyway? I'm gonna come back to that. <laughs> and Afro Fusion Grills, drawing from cherished memories of his childhood kitchen, Tolu's journey as a storyteller commenced early as a meticulously crafted, flavorful taste of his siblings. He also hails from, okay, this is a part, you know, because when I got um, Chef T's profile from his team um, and I, you know, had to rework it. So he came back and said, I need to spell this out. So he is from the royal family in okay what's uromi yeah. right in yeah. those states yeah the okoji family in uromi in those states and he's a former banker and um you know he's pretty much had his you know hand in different industries before venturing into entrepreneurship so i like i said i don't want to read everything but you get to know him himself so okay. one question because something that i'm going to pick up from your profile is the childhood memories part so are you the kitchen guy when you were young <laughs> um because I'm the firstborn, it's um that's why that responsibility fell on me. My younger ones, I uh, needed to take care of them because the kind of home I grew up in, the firstborn is very important. You do everything. Okay. Now it is, you, you, they don't they don't delegate. You do everything. So mm -hmm. that's what made me always be in the kitchen. And again, aside that, growing up, I always loved the kitchen. I'm a very domestic guy. Mm -hmm. So I love the kitchen. I love cleaning. I love doing things. I love anything handy, though. Okay. And that brings me to the first question of what inspired you to start Drills? The real inspiration, like I always tell people, is Owu. You know, they call Owu, let's break down Owu. Owu is probably like <laughs> poverty, or let's just say um, suffering. You don't have money, no money, broken, broke, brokenness. You're broke. So, and you try to figure out that nine to five does not, would not give me what I want. I have expensive taste, I have an expensive lifestyle so we need to work hard and you know those kind of things will just push you into survival mode on what can i do to improve myself what can i do to make this money and i know entrepreneurship hard in the beginning but once you get it right it's going to um come out well and um when i was pondering i think i thought about logistics i thought about um different things and that same night i just dreamt of food funny enough so the funny part of it that most of my inspiration comes from dreams too it's people laugh when I say it, but I, I just think and when I sleep and I wake up and I see anything I see, I take it. So, and I just started saying food and it was so weird. I just told my friends those that day, like a week after, I want to start cooking out. Leave on for the woman now. I said, I'm going to start. And that, that was 2020, July. I had my first taste party on July 1st, 2020, with my friends and everybody liked the food. And that was how grills took off. Amazing. Uh, July 1st, that would be Canada Day. Yes, it was, that it was just a very strategic um, date for me. 
it so i just purposely put it that day so that all of us going to celebrate Great. Great. and did this dream come with you you know trying to revolutionize um suya was that the first concept enough, that you got? no there was no there was um it was basically food in the beginning then you know like like as a former banker and a marketing guy and somebody that knows this world is all about innovation and providing services. I knew everybody was cooking. Basically almost everybody, everybody thinks so easy to cook. Everybody cooks. Everybody can cook. But to cook for a for a multitude of people is the hardest part. So I had to have a niche for myself. Like, okay, what can I do in this food that would not would have limited people in it? And mm -hmm. I realized Suya is one thing that we love back mm -hmm. home. But it's something that is not so common here, and the food that we get doesn't taste as good as we want it. Most of us just manage food in Canada. So most of us, that's it. And I was like, you know what? This, this one works. And what got me to the catering? It was just a friend that called me, come grill for me in the party, and I did one, and that's how it continued, continued for the next years. And here mm -hmm. I am today. Nice. And how has the experience been since you started? What has it been like since you started the business? Ups and down, trajectory of life. You go up, you go down. It's been like that. And uh, but today's another story, though. So I think the business has stabilized itself finally, mm -hmm. or it's stabilizing itself. Let me use the word: is stabilizing itself, but in a rapid pace. So good now. Now it's um, I really do enjoy what I do now. All right. Thank you for sharing that. And can you share, like, you know, some example of how you have blended traditional suya with, you know, modern day techniques? I've been to your restaurants. I've seen, you know, I've had the experience of the meal that you provide there. But for those who have not been there, you know, can you just give us an idea of how you've been able to, you know, turn this innovation into something worthwhile? Well, like I said, I know life's all about the new life is all about innovation, and I <coughs> excuse me. I thought about it that okay, so everybody knows Suya, but you know we need to revolutionize this thing. We need to make it fit for the divers so that everybody can really eat eat it. And um, that's where the idea of the Jack Suya came in from, at least for the first time. I um I said okay, let's start infusing other spices into Suya. So I tried the jerks. To, to create a jack suya chicken and um it was a very perfect combo it was something i um i showcased in the footprint program too and i can imagine what everybody was thinking shots were well, like probably 20 in the room top people and nobody even knew what suya was so i had to explain the meaning of what suya is and um excuse me and how the fusion comes with jack and um they tasted it they loved it it was good. And um, after that, when I opened my retail outlets, I thought about that. What's the next thing I can do again to innovate? And that's where the Suya burger came from. And I know it's something that is a bit common in Nigeria, and it's something we eat when we're broke. I remember that. But again, that's where the cabin of the niche comes from. Like, I was like, okay, what can I do that's not so common here? And that's where I realized... Sorry, excuse me. And that's where... Um, the Suya burger came from, and burger is a very, very universal meal. And I thought about it that this is something that the all diverse community can identify with easily. So, what makes mine very mo much more special? I've eaten a lot of burgers in this country, and most of them have done this dry bun and all these things that are not like ours. So, I know we had this agate bread, and I walked up to the owner and I said, "Okay, correct me this bun with sesame seed. Let's look like a real burger bun." And this size, and let mine be the true agege burger, and that, that was how the burger two came in. So the two major innovations right now: the suya wrap, the suya burger, the jack suya. They are doing very well in the market now. People are getting to accept them. Oh, nice. Um, just a quick one. So I hear you when you talk about the agege bread. It means that that agege bread, the bun, was customized, mm -hmm. tailored for grills. Customized. Is that right? Yes, it's customized actually. Yeah. Oh, it great. It's the same agege bread, agege filling. That same sliced bread you get is the mm -hmm. same thing in the bun. Customized nice. for grills. Customized for grills. And speaking of, you know, customizing stuff as well, I remember that I watched a recent interview that you posted. And you talked about your spice customized for your brand as well. Uh, that's the Suya spice. So, I mean, I'm, I'm used 
to see as price. Is there anything that makes it customized for grills, or do you mean it's just branded for grills, or you have your secret ingredients that, of course, you don't want you to share all that? That you you. Know, <laughs> anyway, yeah, customized for grills means um, three years ago when I started, four years ago, I had to go to Nigeria to get a product. Uh, uh, developer for food and I uh, have to develop my own special kind of spice. Suya spice tastes almost the same thing, but at the end of the day, we still have different tastes in Suya spice. Mm -hmm. So, I have to make my, like, to be honest, really what I sell people is what I like. Okay. So, my taste board is what I use. So, when I got the perfect combination of that spice, that's what I started exporting constantly. So, I do not use any other spice and my spice, no bragging, tastes different from every other spice that most people have. And that's why my beef suya or whatever I make with my suya spice comes out perfect. It's a complex flavor balance. Great. And, you know, in running this business, what are some of the challenges you've encountered so far? And how have you been able to navigate those problems? Besides the exporting from Nigeria, well, that's Nigeria. Exporting the spice, I've had... Um, <clears throat> difficulties i've had i've lost my spice in shipment then manpower to to get people to serve is always easy but to get people to grill and have the same passion that you have is a very hard one like for example right now i'm looking for like two three even possible four grill masters but what i get is just people that want to learn and um yes it's good to want to learn but um because i'm the only one right now i can bring people to learn on board probably after i have like one or two people that can do the training Adding someone to learn right now adds more burden to me as an entrepreneur. So that's why I, I've tried to find who is already, at least I don't even care if you can't grow so yeah. Just be able to grow. That's, that, that's easier for once you can grow. I can teach you my portioning, I can teach you my marinading, I can teach you my techniques. So that works. So manpower, major, Nigeria exports. And aside that, I don't think I have any other challenge because people accepting my food has been very overwhelming. I didn't think most of my innovations was going to hit like that. The share when I got the retail outlets, it, um, boom, it's growing as it's more rapid than I can even think of. And the good part of it is that 85% of my customers are even diverse. Let's say 70% are whites and maybe the remaining 15% are Nigerians. So the way the world is accepting it is phenomenal. And it's, um, it's inspiring, it's exciting. I can't wait for the biggest break. <laughs> Really? Uh, so for anyone who is watching right now um you heard him is not you're not looking for people you're going to spoon feed that's the word you're looking for professionals who yes you don't need professional. To, you don't be professional but just be able to grow once you can do that i'm fine okay and you know speaking of the business as well and the expansion of the business where do you see grills say in five years um are there plans to make this a franchise across canada across the globe um, where do you see the brand? Because, like you said, it's growing and it's expanding. Yeah, yeah. The franchising is the end. Um, is the end game. At uh, four years, four five years from now, when I'm fifty, I should be thinking of sleeping and be making money. People using my name to trade. So, franchising the end products and um, expanding to more branches. And um, we already, I've already developed a model. We don't need too much. So, probably before the year runs out which we have like three more three four more branches because the the response is overwhelming and i realize i have a lot of client and um, customers far and wide so um accelerating the expansion it's uh um it's number one priority right now and aside as well i don't know the manpower matters because i can't expand if i don't have people that can do the job mm -hmm. because for the fact that the retail brand is still very new in the markets if i go expand and i don't have people that will do the right job it can it can break the the brand quickly the brand can fall faster so those are the things i'm prioritizing right now get good them good hands because um one room was not built in a day and one man did not build amazon we need a team a solid team and once i can get that kind of team come on yeah. sky is limited to my yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, are there plans this so yeah, spice that is tailored to your brand do you have, because I mean, I, I, I go to a lot of African stores and I see branded Suya Spices. Are there plans for you to have your Suya Spice on the shelf anytime soon? Yes, there are. But I'm, just, I'm just distracted for now. There are plans. There are okay. plans to bring us Suya Spice. It was in the market once and um, I just got distracted with this. 
But now that we're already structuring things out, um, I think pretty soon, pretty soon, maybe in the next three to six months, mm -hmm. we should find um, girls' brand. There's always going to be different. Great. So I'm just trying to make sure I bring out very different things, something exciting to people, something, um, uh, what do you call it, a good brand, something, you know, something fancy that people will love. And even when you try the product inside, you always love it. So, you know, if it ain't grilled, you know, ain't grilled, man. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. And, um, you know, just to come down to, um, you know, the business itself and some of the menus that you have, I know I've tried the chicken wrap, I've tried the suya itself. Um, are there plans to infuse new meals and menu to the brand or you're just keeping it at the level it is right now? Um, are you going to test run with other products? Are you going to, you know, innovate and bring in other products um, on board? Well, one thing is that I have almost like 30 on, 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 um, on disclosed products. Should I use what on disclosed or products that are, right now in the, in the store, I have about 15 to 20 menus and there's even more in my head and written out. So as we expand, you know, it's, it's plus and minus. It's which one is doing well, take it out. Which one is not doing well, take it in. So I, I'll be innovating, I'll be moving, I'll be, you know, that kind of like, how I put it now, I'll be testing my products as time goes on. For now, I'm just like four months old. It's still very new. I haven't more than enough in the store. I can't even handle everything yet. So adding more, like I have the sweet, the tandoori. Yes. I have Jex, so I have tandoori suya. I've tried that. I have a lemon garlic suya coming up. Uh, What's a tandoori suya? You want to tandoori, that tandoori is first? an Indian jerk. Uh, sorry, Indian spice too. Oh. Like the way you look at um, tandoori is an Indian spice. The way you look at um, suya spice too. So mm -hmm. I'm already infusing that with suya to get uh, what do you call it? To get a kind of Jexy flavor too. I'm trying mm -hmm. lemon garlic out. I'm trying um, honey garlic too. So there is it's a fusion. It's just so that people that love this flavor, when they hear with another flavor, they'll be excited. Like, okay, the food curious. Let's try this out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know it's not just here that you have at the store. You also have chicken wraps. Um, you want to talk about some of your chicken products as well. I know there's chicken wrap. I know that there's chicken suya, which I feel a lot of people have not really explored much. Um, so don't what like are some of the... Eh? People don't like chicken. When people hear suya, they think of beef. Even when I, even when I go to parties and people add suya, to, add chicken suya to their menu, most people aim for the beef. The beef has to finish for them to aim for the suya. So Great. suya is beef. Even in the wraps, suya, beef wrap, the beef burger, the agigi burger, anything beef that moves faster. And lamb. Okay. Great. Uh, and you know, as a founder of the brand yourself, what's your favorite meal on your menu? What is one thing that when you're in the store, you're like, okay, you know what? I gotta have this today. Wow. I have I need to have this. It's just this year. I don't eat my food. I don't eat my food. Ah, okay. Not really. Maybe maybe when I'm really hungry or once when I'm cooking and tasting. I don't think I think it's very few times in my life I've really sat down and just um eating what I made. Because most times I eat to survive. So I don't I'm not I'm not a foodie like that. I hardly eat. I, I maybe water, coffee, then maybe a few, maybe if I want to eat rice, maybe just a spoon of rice, maybe it's a small spoon of rice and things like that. I avoid carbs most times. So, okay. and um, I think if I get into my food, I'm going to be eating it too much. I've tried mm -hmm. my wrap because the funny thing is that if I, if I really want to go there, I think my wrap, my beef suya wrap, I would say, because that's the thing I realized, even though I don't eat much of my food, that beef stew wrap, the first day I tried it, which was funny enough, one month after I made it, the first stew wrap I made it, I just gave it to a customer. I don't know why I don't have that video to show my first wrap. But I don't even, I didn't even try it. I didn't even taste my product. The other thing I tasted was the sauce. I just always have this confidence that whatever I give you is going to be good. Nice. It's, it's, a divine, it's a divine flavor. Nice. And when did you, just before we wrap up the session, when did you infuse the stew wrap into your menu? Um, February when I opened, it just okay. was, a week before I opened, when I had the retail deal and the, the store outlets, everything concluded. I was like, What can be new? This burger came, came in a year ago. It, uh -huh. uh, people take it for events. Uh -huh. My suya is normal. What can be new that I can put in here? So that was where the wrap came in from because I tried to Google, I can find people making a burger, but most wraps people made them in the house. Nobody, even when I think in Nigeria, I don't know about Nigerian restaurants, can I try Googling? But I don't really see anybody making beef suya wrap, or beef suya shawarma. Nobody makes it. So okay. and that was, I was like, okay, this may work. And I'm a good brand guy. I know how to market. I know how to push product. I know how to be in your face. Mm -hmm. So 
I just said, well, let's do it so long it is good. It yeah. Will be good space. Yeah. And your work has really yeah, no, really no, gone far. No, um, no, no. you know, on your plate is your photo with the I think with the premier and also the the MPP for Scarborough, um, you know, the recognition you've gotten for your products. And, you know, that would make me ask you, like, you know, just on the final note, what has the feedback been like from not just the Nigerian community, but people who have come to the store? What has the feedback been like? Because they say feedback is like the hoard for business. It keeps you going. So what has the feedback been like so far? My feedback, perfect, excellent. Like I told you, don't be brag. They make the it food. It's the, it's the the best feeling anybody's taste board can ever encounter. On my Google review, over 200 people, or almost 200, I guess. I'm not really sure about the numbers right now. Authentic reviews is 4.9. Even the point one that I have is because somebody, then back in the days, I used to do home catering and somebody came into the, came there and could not get his food because he said it's not his store. So he put it on, that's only one, one, um, one star I have. Every other thing on my Google review, anybody can check, it's 4.9. Authentic and from everybody in the world, Chinese, oh, Imbo, Nigeria, everybody dropping the real review. So, so comments, feedback, the best. Google has brought me over 50 customers just because they saw the 4.9. They were like, what is this restaurant that has this much human beings putting five stars only? So you get them curious. Like yesterday, after that post I did for the Jet mm -hmm. year, I like four white people coming from lunch, for lunch. They drove from downtown mm -hmm. to come to mm -hmm. the Jet year. They don't want to be on a right. video, so it was always. I think they are corporate people. They were like they saw this thing and they needed to come try it. And when they tried it, they were like, "Wow!" They dropped that review again. So it's been over. That's good. Well, that's they tried. good. Let's just that's, keep. That's let's, good. let's just keep keeping the standard. Yes, I was just gonna say that. So well done on everything that you've done. Congratulations on your accolades. Congratulations on the business. Now, like I always like to do, advertise your business. If yeah, in their face, being their face. <laughs> People walk into my store and tell me, I see your burger and your wraps in my dreams. And uh, my staff joked one day and said, if it was Nigeria, they'll say they do jazz. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, I know. It's the power of adverts. You wake up every morning, that's all I'm going to pop up in your face. Agege burger, tideo. Come on, chop. Join the sensation, the grill sensation. <laughs> Okay, so give us the hard rats in a few seconds. And the grill sensation. Mm -hmm. Five from Western Road, Toronto. Grills, the best meal your mouth will ever encounter. Your palates are going to dance for joy when you walk in and have a bite. Trust me. Right. Money back guaranteed. One of the few guys that give money. You don't like the food, I'll give your money back. Nice. Oh, fam. Don't worry. We hope that people won't have some money back. They're going to they have fun. They don't always end up asking for money back. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so they much. Give me um, more they will give me more money. Yeah. I know, right? Thank you so much. Um, I think Ozi Adeniji is trying to, you know, she says Tolu. Um, I know you might not be able to see everybody who is joining. I'm not in so, I can see Ozi. Yeah. Uh, so we're going uh, to together, my friend. <laughs> ah, nice. Nice. Thank you so oh, much. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> you might want to talk base with OC after. I mean, she, I think she's mentioned your name like three times. Um, OE on the on the platform. Um, goes to show that you know a lot of people really like what you do and we're happy no, about no, no, that. No, no. So I wish. I you my food, she's in, as, as, as well, she's, she's far away. Maybe when she comes to winter, she can chop the food. Well, <laughs> I, maybe at some point you start you start selling the frozen you know side that's, of your that's beef. The plan. So that's in the plan. Frozen, you don't need to come for your party. Go grill it yourself. We'll marinate and I was going to say free. that. that oh, yes, that's in the plan. Because I think that's the even way pre, to go. Even pre-made suya. Not chicken. I don't like chicken like that. But beef suya, yes, you can freeze it and pack it up. All and those things. For export yeah. and everything. We're going to go international. Our, we want to lock down this country. Everybody Amazing. And support. All right. And you do that. Thank you so much for your time today. And just before you People go... Take, you know, hey, me on board. <laughs> There could be a young person who's gonna watch this on my YouTube channel when I post on my channel who wants to go into business. Um, you had the encouragement and the courage as well to challenge yourself to make that move. That person might be thinking, can I make it? Should I? Should I shouldn't I? Could I? Would I? What word do you have for that person today? That one person who is watching this or who is gonna watch and say, 
I want to go into business myself, either food business or any kind of business. A word of encouragement for them. A word way of encouraging. I tell people one thing, and it may sound weird. There's always divine favor and there's luck in life. That's why people do different businesses. Then the pure water that they will decide to sell after doing all the contracts and all the big ones decides to make them a millionaire. So yeah. you will keep chest. I didn't. This is the first business I ever go into. So I, I, I've always been a nine to five guy for, for about fifteen years. So it's not. Um, I think some at, at the end of the day, consistency matters. Your yes. networking matters. Yes. Your charisma, your aura, your courage, and how you yes. how people feel you matters. Your persona mm -hmm. matters too. So it's a lot of things to bring a brand to life. And that's why people that have money sometimes have a very big team. I think I've been able to survive this long or get to this stage because I'm a very versatile kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, I, really, I really like showbiz videos. I love making videos. I love taking pictures. So those things are already there. I, have, I know how to brainstorm. I have ideas in my head that are as crazy and as good and normal as possible. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a very creative mindset mm -hmm. because to make a product is very easy. How do you sell it? That's the hardest part. You can be a, the best cook in the world and the best jewelry maker and the best whatever you want to be. If mm -hmm. you do your store, you could do your store. So people, you'll be looking at it yourself every morning and be wearing your jewelry or be eating your food. So how do you get it out there? So getting out yeah. there is the cuckoo. And mm -hmm. uh, people like us oh, are blessed with the marketing skills too. We are creative and we can market. We can be in your faith every day. So be in people's faces. And your product has to be good at the end of the day because if it's not good and you're in that face, they will push you out of that face. So I remember yeah, two, three years ago, people used to jump my, my, my videos. This boy don't start again. Because they post, they post, they post, they post. I know, I see it, I hear it, I laugh. But today, even people are, people are, Craving to be my videos. I get people come in the store and be like, no, you must put me in a video. Oh, you must, you know, this kind of thing. So I like that because it shows that, okay, people are appreciating the brand right now. And that's because you stayed consistent to your dream. You did not give up. You didn't wither. You just. Even when you're broke, right? Somebody has called me for how do I become there. I said, what about if you don't sell for three months? What would you do? Ah, the best ah, ah. The business, no business with that now. And that's exactly business. I've, I've back two, three years ago, winter, summer is my business. Winter, I get very dry. So how, how do you survive those days? But I still kept pushing. It's not easy. Maybe selling one train a month, $200 or $300. Who's Zaga? Who's Zaga? He'll be coming and knocking on the door and say, ah, Bobo, uh, pay your bill. So, you know, and at the end of the day, that's it. Consistency, mm -hmm. tenacity. You have to be tenacious. Yeah. Very important. And like I said, the creative mindset. If you are not creative, you just think you have money. Money may sure be that. You can just you have to your your business. You have to know your business. Yep. 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 Thank you so much. Like I said, I, I think I didn't chip it in. Most of those the Suya skills I learned on YouTube. So in case you want to hear, I learned on YouTube about to make Suya. I never met Suya in Nigeria for once in my life. Okay. Right. I learned everything. Most of even the dishes, the main thing, how to grill all those things. I learned them on YouTube. YouTube University. Then I perfected my hand. Yes, then I perfected my hand. So anybody that wants to do it, it's time. a very good tool to learn things. Okay. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to everyone who joined. I see your name scrolling up as you join and, you know, check it out. Thank you for joining. So, Lou, I wish you all the best. Um, we are to the world, as usual. Um, Definitely, I know that you have something coming soon, um, like a little little gig at your store. So yeah, my birthday is coming. Yes, you're all invited. I'll yeah, the ivories. So my printer is slowing down, but June second, from two okay. p.m. Okay, party never stops until Chetty stops the party. This that is it. That's the, you see, that is exactly the business. You know, the vibe it brings into the that's business. True. So yeah, that's the vibe now. Give them vibes, like vibes. Yeah. The All right, Tulu, um, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your time. And thank you to everybody who joined. I hope that thank history you inspired time, you. Too. My takeaway today is that just do it. Just, just do, it. do it. And like you said, you learn on YouTube. It's you learn on YouTube. That means tool. what? It's a very beautiful tool. Yeah, it's, it's an, it should be an inspiration for someone out there who is going to watch this. So don't sit on your goals. Don't sit on your talent. Don't sit on your skills. 
exploit, use it, and let it make money for you. All right, Tolu, I wish you a beautiful weekend. I wish and, you a beautiful um, weekend too, Esther. Right. Thank you for having me on board. No problem. And have a good one. Bye, everyone. See you after the Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, Tolu. Have a good one. Bye, Bye for now.